Hey, good morning, options traders, and welcome back, everyone. Well, if you followed my channel or Facebook trading group for a while, you know that I like to post videos once in a while challenging the conventional thinking, and especially when it comes to the more complicated topics like the Greeks, because there are a lot of misperceptions about the way that options work and about the way your Greeks work. And if you have misperceptions, you're going to make bad decisions. So one thing that traders often hear is that your short-term options, it would also be true for stocks that have low volatility, that these will have the greatest gamma, that those options will have the largest numbers for gamma, and they will therefore accelerate your deltas more so than any other option on the board. Well, is this really true? Let's take a look. So recall that gamma shows the rate of change of your delta. And that's why it's sometimes called the delta of the delta. It shows by how much your deltas are going to be changing as that stock price moves. Now, generally, it is true that your gamma is the greatest for short-term options and also for low volatility stocks and definitely for a combination of the two. If you've got a stock that's low volatility and you've got a weekly option at the money, it's going to have a very high gamma. Well, while this is basically true, the problem is it gives traders the illusion that they always have the greatest gamma. So here's the reason that it causes problems and misperceptions. Let's take a look at two different bell curves. So in gray might be the bell curve, or let's say the standard deviation or the volatility for a particular stock. And notice that this might be for a short-term option or one with low volatility. And that just means it's got a very tall, skinny curve which is just a fancier way of saying that there's not a big range of potential stock prices for this option to move, at least in this period of time. However, if we keep all other factors the same, same stock, same strike, but we give it more time to expiration or volatility has increased, we might move from the gray curve to the blue. And notice that the blue curve is shorter and wider. Again, just signifying that now we have a wider range of potential ranges for this stock price to move. So as I've talked about before in previous videos on gamma, one way to visualize your gamma is to think of it as the height of the curve. So yes, you can see that the short-term options have a much taller curve, at least right here in the center, than the longer term or higher volatility stocks. So here's what that means is that if the stock makes, let's say a $1 step to the right, that that red area right there covers a larger percentage of the gray curve than it does for the blue, which is to say it has increased the delta by a larger amount for the short-term option. And because of this, again, you can compare the height of the curve. So you can see, yes, at the money, short-term options, the curve sits much higher than it does for the longer dated or the high volatility stocks. But notice that that is only true right here in the center or at least for a fairly small range. If the stock moves down or to the left far enough or up this way to the right far enough, what happens? The blue curve actually sits higher than the gray. And now the blue curve has higher gamma. And you'll even see that there's points where they cross where they will have equal gammas. So while it's true that a short-term option might have greater gamma at the money, it's also going to have lower gammas if the stock moves up or down. So does it always have the greatest gamma? Not even remotely close. And you need to take that into account when you're setting up your strategies. So always remember about the max range of deltas. Your deltas can move only from zero to 100. So if the option goes far enough out of the money, you've got delta zero. If it goes in the money at expiration, you've got delta of 100. So all options, have their deltas move from zero to 100. It's nothing that's unique to a short-term option or to a low volatility stock. They all do, they just do it to different degrees. So overall, all options have the same total gamma, or you might say on average, they all take you from zero to 100. They do it in different steps, but they all take you from point A to point B. So the better way to understand this concept of which options have the greatest gamma is that your short-term and low volatility options have the greatest what we call local gamma, which is at the strike. 
By local, it just means that in that small range right there around the strike prices. Yes, short-term and low volatility options will have very high gammas. But if you let that stock price rise or fall just a little bit, or if that volatility happens to spike a little bit, those can all go out the window. And you need to be aware of that when you're setting up your strategies, your hedges, your rolls, and your morphs, because if you're not taking that into account, and you're assuming that these options always have the greatest gamma, you will absolutely be making dangerous decisions for your strategies. So for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.